Let me show you how we can do the initial setup on Motorola Edge 60 Pro. So once you turn on the phone for the first time, you will see this screen after a short while, where first we can select our language. So if the language that is set up right now is incorrect, then you can tap on the current one in order to find the list of your languages available on this list, of course, select your language, and then we can proceed. So let's press start over here in the bottom right corner. We have the option to set up this phone by using another device. So if you want to immediately copy settings, accounts, and pretty much everything from your previous phone, then you should be able to select either Android device or iPhone or iPad in order to proceed. And then you can follow the instructions. However, in my case, I want to perform the clean initial setup. So I just, I'm just gonna skip. Let's press skip over here in the bottom left corner. Then we need to select our Wi-Fi. Well, we don't need to, but it is of course recommended to do so. So if you can find your Wi-Fi over here, then just select it. You can also press see all Wi-Fi networks in order to find the full list. You can also set up offline. So if you don't have Wi-Fi, just press this text over here and then you can follow the rest of the instructions. In my case, I'm going to select my Wi-Fi and then we need to enter the password. After you enter the correct password and you connect to the Wi-Fi, we will proceed. Over here, we have privacy and security by Motorola. So over here, we can enable or disable certain stuff. It is actually recommended to optimize battery use. We also have smart updates where we can automatically download and install security updates and bug fixes over Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna use that. Scroll all the way down and press accept and continue. Now let's wait for the next screen to pop up. And after that, you should be able to find the Google sign in page. So you can sign into your Google account by providing email or phone number. You can also create a new account if you don't have one yet. You can also skip this process by just pressing skip over here on the left side at the bottom. In my case, I'm gonna sign in. So enter the email or phone number. And after that, of course, we have password. We need to enter the password. In case you forgot your password, you can use this text over here. Once you enter the password, press next. Next, we need to agree to terms of service by Google. And then let's wait for the next screen to show. Then we have the option to set up a pin code for our phone. So this is the screen lock password. If you want to, you can also press over here, screen lock security options in order to choose a different password type. However, you can also set up the password later in the phone settings. So I'm just gonna skip over here by pressing the skip in the bottom left corner. Then we can also uh, press skip again in order to proceed. Now we have the option to once again copy apps and data from another device or even from our Google account. So if you have some backups on your Google account, then you can proceed by pressing next. And after that, you should be able to find your backups, for example, over here. Now I'm just gonna press do it later. There we go. And in your case, if you don't want to copy any apps or data, then on the left side, you will find the option to skip as well. Then we have Google services where we can enable location, we can allow scanning. We also have the usage and diagnostic data. In my case, I'm gonna disable location uh, as I don't need to have it enabled right now, but of course we can turn it on or off later on. Scroll all the way down and press accept. Then we have the option to backup data using our Google account so we can backup photos and videos as well as other device data that is listed below over here. So you can check on these boxes in order to decide what you want to back up and then you can press turn on backup. If you don't want to back up anything, then just press don't back up over here on the left side. Then we need to choose our default browser and search engine. So let's press next. First, we have the list of browsers. If you don't know which one to choose, most likely you can just choose Google Chrome. You will be happy with this choice. Um, however, every single one of them is just fine. They all work, they do their job. So it doesn't really matter that much for most of the people. And then we can press set as default over here in the bottom right corner. And then in terms of search engine, most likely you want to choose Google. Of course, this is the most popular choice. And then press set as default. And there we go. Now we can just continue setup by pressing continue over here, or you can press the leave and get reminder over here in order to later on get a notification that you can still finish the setup. However, if you do that, then you will just return to most of the screens that you see during the initial setup. So you will have the option to go through them once again in order to change your mind, for example. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna actually show you what is next if we decide to actually continue. So let's press continue. So first we have the quick share. So over here we can scroll down and press I agree since, uh, well, I guess you want to use um, the quick share function. Then we have Gemini, so we can press continue. And then we have the option to use the Hey Google voice command. 
Um, in this case, well, I don't really need to use it, so I'm just gonna press no thanks. And then we have also the Google Pay option, so you can add your credit or debit card. Um, but in this case, um, I'm not gonna do that right now. We can use uh, the wallet app later on to be able to pay with our phone. And let's skip that. Then we have additional apps, which unfortunately we cannot really disable over here. It's just the list of additional apps that will be installed by the phone. So unfortunately, we just have to press OK. And let's wait for the next screen to show up. Then we have the option to use notifications from Motorola about newer stuff, like exclusive information about product launches and so on and so forth. Most likely, you don't want to be bothered with this information, so we can press not now. However, if you wish to receive those notifications, then of course we can turn it on. And then press not now if you don't want to use notifications. Then we also have additional options to send your email to them so that you can once again get those information. Once again, we can just press not now and then again. Then we have the live lock screen, which allows you to pretty much change wallpaper every time you go to the lock screen. Me personally, I don't like this feature. I prefer to use just one wallpaper all the time, the one that I set up by myself. If you enjoy this feature, then of course you can turn this option on. Once again, we can manage that later in the settings. So in my case, I'm just gonna turn it off. In your case, you can keep it on and then let's press next. Then we have the navigation style. So of course we can use buttons at the bottom of the screen or we can use the gestures in order to navigate on our phone. If you decide to use buttons, we can change the button order so that you can have the back button on the right side instead of the left side. And then let's go next. Then we have the theme where we can choose light, dark or transition, which means that automatically the phone will turn on dark mode based on the time of the day. Let's stick with light for now and let's go next. Then we have parental controls. I don't need to set them up, so I'm gonna just skip. And then we need to press finish. Then we have explore your model where we have some tips and stuff, but we can just press go to my home screen in order to just proceed. Press got it over here. We have the information about the apps that we can install, so additional bloatware. So in this case, I don't want any bloatware, so we can just uncheck everything. And then we can press continue, or we can just press skip over here. And there we go, we are finally in the home screen. If you scroll up for the first time to the app drawer, you will see this information, so you can take a turn in order to find out what's new. I'm just gonna press maybe later. Just tap on whatever is highlighted over here, or let's just try to go back, because for some reason we cannot just tap anywhere. And there we go, still, as you can see, some bloatware is still being installed for some reason. I'm not sure why, um, but yeah, it is what it is. So. That's about it, now we can just start using our phone. Thanks for watching, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If you're looking for more guides then also be sure to check out my channel as I got plenty of videos for this phone. Bye!